Hi, my name is Ram and welcome to the series where we build real web application with React, Redux and Node.js. So it was a long time since the last episode. Um, it was a crazy two months and I, at the end of them I just uh, caught a nasty flu that ruined my throat and I couldn't do anything. So yeah, that was fun. But everything's well, that ends well. I want to thank everybody for your support. I want to thank most of all the people who purchased my course. Thank you very much. By the way, the final chapter of the standard package uh, is ready. It dedicated this, the ninth chapter uh, is dedicated to deployment. So you will learn a little bit of DevOps as well. So yeah, go to the jsfullstack.com and purchase it. It will mean a lot to me and you will get a lot of value out of it. So. That was one of the problems why I didn't, you know, produce uh, content. But another one was that I, I was, you know, finding it very hard to motivate myself to continue with bookworm application. Because, to be honest, bookworm app is quite boring to build. It's a great application for teaching purposes, but I'm not teaching in this, in this particular series. I'm not teaching you stuff. I'm just showing you the workflow. And I want to show you the whole process with all the things that... Uh, needed to include to be included in the development of the full stack application and bookworm is just very very boring uh, so I decided to make a pivot and create another application so we're gonna use all the stuff that we already developed in this series so basically that's you know, everything that is connected with users so user authentication user sign up uh, password recovery so all that we got there we will reuse it so we'll not repeat our ourselves and we'll move forward with new features with new application so if you know me you know that i am a board games geek i love playing with my family uh, and, and my friends board games i got a small collection here and also i like to run ro tabletop role playing games and the most imp the most famous one is the dungeons and dragons of course I'm not a fan myself, I do not play this game, but it's perfect game for, you know, optimization and creating software for it because there are lots of math in here, organizational stuff. So yeah, it's just, that's why it actually uh, was used uh, as, as the basis for such games as Baldur's Gate or Icewind Dale, something like that. So there is a dungeon and dragons and what they do, they have this organized play adventures league and this is just the way to if you do not have you know a stable gaming group you just can go to an event with your character play one shot get the experience gold or magical items and all this loot that you gathered in your dungeons and you just you know level leveling up your character and you use the same character in another event like this so that's the gist of organized play so an application that we're going to build is this one dnd adventure is league Basically, that's the Adventurers League hub, that the management application that will help users, uh, masters and, uh, and community organizers to organize games and players to find games and to attend them and, and reward, reward them with experience points, with uh, gamification inside of the application, like achievements, etc. So um, it, it's quite exciting because there are a lot of very cool features that we can actually create and you know, really leverage the React, not just CRUD application that you can do with Rails, for example, but something that's really involved involved in the front end as well. And uh, so here, what I did right now, I just reused the code that we already have and I added a little bit of styling on it. Uh, I switched from Semantic UI to Bootstrap because that's basically the framework that I use a lot with my clients. So just not switching you know, context, and that's the version four. And you can see that's a beauty, right? <laughs> it's a beauty. That's the best thing that I ever designed. Yeah. So um, I'm going to do some kind of design. I'm, I'm practicing. I'm really suck uh, at it, but I'm practicing and I will do it off camera and then I'm just commit and walk you through the commits in episodes, like an overview of what I've done during the week. But we will not do CSS uh, on camera because it's very boring to just like seeing how I'm struggling with this kind of stuff. But what we have here is, is the main page. Uh, we have the sign up, uh, sign up form. And you can see that I added username field here because now our application will be 
different users will communicate with each other. We don't want to expose their emails. We just want to use the username like a handle. So uh, other than that, I just added username on the back end and on the front, front end. We have our login form. We have our forgot password form. So as you can see, I just restyled it a little bit. And if you log in, we'll have our just the navigation bar and uh, I can log out. That's it. So what we built, but I just stripped out the books functionality out of there. And you can find this in the Git repository in the links below and just pull it, run it, and we go in to start from there. Another thing that I noticed that uh, I can do, uh, you know, software development on a, vim, on a whim, so without any plan, like, hey, I have an idea, so this is going to be our application, but I do not have a plan for it. So I just need to come up every time with a new feature. So that doesn't work for me. I need a plan and I created one. So for the last week or so, I was, you know, thinking about this application, you know, drawing some mockups and uh, yeah, I come up with a plan. So. Uh, this is the public Trello board, link in the description, and you can just go through it and read through it. And you will see there are a lot of cards. So each card is quite complex, sometimes a very complex feature that I want to implement. That's the part of the application. MVP is the minimal viable product. That what I consider to be most important features. And later is the features that could be, uh, it's just like an idea box. These features are great to have when we already have an application running. So, and as you can see, there are a lot of stuff. So user creates community. And here I have the complete, um, you know, brain dump of what is this feature is about with a description. And some of them even have this kind of a mock-up screens. And as you can see, the complexity of the application um, increased because now on the front end, we'll have quite complex data. And on the back end as well, we'll have different entities communicating with each other. And uh, for example, here, I plan to do the wizard form. So uh, form with three um, steps in, in it. And I want to persist this state. So we will use Redux for form, which we never done uh, in this, in my, any of my series before, I think. So, um, yeah, there are a lot of, um, conditional stuff in the form. So smart forms, basically, that's actually why we want to use react to create this kind of, uh, cool interfaces and a lot of, uh, you know, check boxes to fill just to have an idea. Of course, this plan is quite flexible, but as you can see, I got this. Uh, descriptions, uh, kind of my understanding of the data, and yeah, user joins community, uh, a couple of mocks, and I will create other mocks um, as we go as well. And another thing is, I want actually to document this process. So it will talk, take a long, a long time, I think a year or so, because I haven't got time to do it, you know, every day, I will just do it only maybe four or eight hours a week, maximum, I do not have time for more. But uh, so it will take a lot of time to uh, develop it, but not only development is what is interesting, but also launching it and uh, contact, uh, contact people and communities that, uh, that are now organized cha chaotically, right? Um, and, you know, advise them to use this application and taking their feedback, etc., and improving application. So that's what I really want to do. Uh, another thing is that we're going to have the in localization. I can't pronounce this internal internet. Uh, I can't and I can't pronounce this word. So I 18 N, uh, because I want to have in the beginning, Russian and English languages, uh, and later also Spanish and other languages. So we'll do that in the next episode. We'll just have the very simple, um, groundwork for localization, because it's better to do it right away in the beginning to plan it uh, at the beginning of the project than at the end, because then when you ha when you already have application and then hunt down all of this thing that you need to translate, it can be a, a nightmare. So just go to this trailer board. Um, you can comment, I think so, but at least you can read through all these cards. And yeah, let me know what you think. Again, I want to, uh, to stress out that I want to focus on, you know, development, not on teaching in this series. So I want to demonstrate this like a developer journal. And um, yeah, if you want to learn something like React, you can go to jsfullstack.com and learn React. 
uh, from start to finish with all the things that you really need to know. Uh, here I will just comment what I'm doing, sometimes explaining why I'm doing something and, and answering your questions, but basically that's not really a teaching uh, endeavor. Uh, and I commit uh, to one coding session per week. So I will do one long session, I will record it, then I split it into several episodes and I will post this episode during the week. So, And during the week I also will do some kind of design, some kind of CSS, maybe small fixes that will not be uh, done, they will not be done on camera, but I will walk you through them uh, like an overview. Like for example, if I go to the uh, Git repository right now for React. So here you can see uh, that what I did, right? So the initial commit here is just I took the theme that we developed for Bookworm and I stripped the books and renamed stuff. And uh, from there I just added some styles like a home styling page, uh, I switched to Bootstrap, etc, etc, etc. So you can go through this uh, commits and have an idea what has changed. Okay, so I'm very glad to be back. That's it for this episode, just the overview, just a little bit of teaser. I'm very excited to start working on this application. So if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, or even more importantly, share it with your friends and spread the word. If you want to support me financially, you can always become my patron or just make a one-time donation via PayPal. And if you want to learn something very valuable and build your career, you can go to jsfullstacker.com and purchase my course. I will be very grateful and you will get a lot of value out of it. So thank you very much for your time and have a great day.